Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with the best cycle deck in Clash Royale that every single pro player is playing right now. You guys will look at it and you're like, wait, this has to be a joke. It's 2.1 Elixir, but let me tell you something. It's not a joke. After the Fire Spirit buff, this deck is disgustingly strong. Especially with the Cannon buff, your defenses are rock solid. And when you go in for a Miner plus a Wall Breakers push, with Fire Spirits to clean up all the distraction, Bats, Goblin Gang, your opponent will have absolutely no answers. If they are able to counter the first one, you get back to another one before they even know what hit them. So let's go jump straight some games and assert some dominance. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss out on any of the daily videos. And a huge thank you to everyone that's supporting the channel with Creator Code SirTag. Creator Code SirTag allows us to consistently upload daily videos on the channel and it greatly improves the editing. Hey, we got a game here, so you already know what we're trying to do. We're trying to split wall breakers as fast and furious as possible. I should have clicked through the intro. Next time, I'm going to click through the intro and drop wall breakers as quickly as possible. And then our opponents can be extremely annoyed because they'll load it in the game and then the wall breakers are already on the tower. I will show you the supreme sauce and the tactics that you have never seen before. Also, if you guys have like an older phone and it just doesn't load Clash Royale very fast, it is not a good vibe when that happens to you. So I can go in for a cannon probably to counteract the Ram Rider and everything here. Or I could log. There's a lot of different things that I can do. Yeah, I think logging is generally going to be the better vibe. And then we go for high skeletons here. I wonder if the Ram Rider still gets a hit. I don't think so. We are chilling on so many levels. Daryl the Dark Goblin is one of my favorite cards in Clash Royale for good reason. So I'm going to Minor Bats again just because I'm super annoying like that. When you're playing a 2.1 Elixir fast deck, you don't want to be waiting until 10 Elixir to cycle cards. You got to be dropping them fast and furious as quickly as possible. Because as the game starts to ramp up and it gets the double or triple elixir because you don't have big spells, you are in a bad situation. So just want to make sure that you guys know, don't be stupid. Make sure you cycle cards. We're going to keep submitting the wall breakers to annoy him and make him drop other cards on the right hand side. Even though we don't really know if we're going to go in that lane. If we force out elixir, it's always a good play. So we can go for a cannon here. He's going to continue to spam and that's always good. We can go in for bats or renos. Definitely want to log that, make sure the Ram Rider doesn't charge on me. And then we Fire Spirit everything here too. Are we going to be able to clean it up? Come on, Fire Spirit. Deception, disgrace. Fire Spirit didn't jump. No. Wait, he still didn't get a hit. <laughs> I was trolled there. I feel like, I feel like that should have hit my tower. I don't know how, but we got lucky. The Fire Spirit was moral support. That's literally the only explanation that I could possibly conceive. So yeah, thank you, Fire Spirit, for being the best moral support we've ever seen in Clash Royale. That was ridiculous. All right, he's gonna go in Hello for a uh, pack in the back. I guess we cycle multiple cannons here. I, I think that's probably the only play that I could, could do. Maybe we can go for more minor wall breakers. It's gonna be a difficult defense. There's no doubt about it. He's gonna go all in on me here. Baby Dragon's gonna be able to kill that. Why would you bar barrel? The Baby Dragon was chilling, dude. You overcommitted like it was your job. And now we can go for double cannon action. Go for high skeletons. Maybe we go for bats here too. Oh, he's gonna lightning me though. The audacity on this man. The cojones. Okay, so now, now unfortunately, we eat the Ram Rider damage. But it's not that bad because we've got Daryl the Dark Goblin, Miner, all of this junk coming in at him. And it's so hard for him to defend this properly. In fact, we can just log, use bats. And I don't even know if I need to do anything here. I can eat the, the, the Dark Prince because it doesn't matter that much. And we go opposite lane with Fire Spirits and Bats because the Miner is still counter pushing. Let's go, Marvin the Fire Spirit. Let's go. Okay, so the, the only unfortunate thing is uh, I have to defend this and he's probably going to lightning me. So <laughs> just need to keep that uh, under wraps. If we go in for Skeletons here, maybe we can go in for a Miner in the back and then Wall Breakers again and Log on top of the Electro Wizard that he's inevitably going to drop. Can we kill the Electro Wizard? Is the Dark Goblin not going to... Oh my goodness. That was so close. Daryl the Dark Goblin. Let's go! That was insane. That was absolutely so lucky, but we take it. Let's get it. So, <laughs> he lightning sad. I feel like out of all the times the lightning, that's probably not the play. That was the highest cannon possible. And I can't believe Daryl the Dark Goblin pulled out that victory at the end. That was so hype. We got a game here. We're going to split wall breakers and we're going to see what's up. If we start off the game with that, one of the best plays, you force out five elixir. He literally has to go for a cannon card to counter that. And we only drop two elixir and we bait out five. That is a good vibe. That is always a good feeling. 
So the cannon card is going to be super annoying. If we don't log it back, he is able to annihilate the Dark Goblin. Now we're going to go in the back with the Miner, but just because we want to force out Elixir and the Dark Goblin and on the Miner at the same time, it's going to force out way more than he wants to drop. That's what we like to see. And now we can cannon to counter it. So the new and improved cannon is one of the best cards in Clash Royale right now for defensive value. For only three Elixir, I'm able to counter things way cheaper than ever before. Hey, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go in for wall breakers, and I honestly don't feel comfortable running Tombstone. Like, I see a lot of Lava Hound players running Tombstone, I'm like, how do you justify doing this? Everyone and their mother has Mother Witch, just like this guy, and I would have automatically lost. I wouldn't have been able to counter it, you know? It just doesn't feel good. So, the bats are gonna survive with, like, one of them. I think that that will allow us to get some counter push with that miner. Let's go! Barry the Bat, living large on the tower. Look at all that damage we just got from Barry. He is not happy right now. Masterpiece, but to be honest, dude, Barry the Bat is ripping you to pieces. The clan tag, it checks out. The name checks out, brother. So we're gonna go for skeletons here, easily follow up with the Dark Goblin. Have to log that as quickly as possible because I'm not messing around with double cannon card. I don't know about you guys, but it's not very fun when that thing locks under your tower. But you know what? Speaking of the devil, it happened to me right then and there. Is the Mother Witch gonna lock on the Miner instead of the Bats? Oh my goodness, I love when that happens. I also hate when that happens to me, but now what happens to my opponent, there's nothing but good vibes, 24-7, 365 out here. So, Cannon's gonna be able to shut down the little piggy that's going directly towards the tower instead of the Cannon uh, piggy that was targeting it. So that was the most selfless Cannon I've ever seen. He's taking damage, he's like, I gotta help out the tower instead. So, now we go for wall breakers on the left hand side. I don't know if this guy's gonna have a good answer to us. I feel like if he just keeps cloning, we're able to use Dark Goblin, Cannon, Fire Spirits. So maybe our deck is extremely good against the clone spammers. That's what I've been uh, gleaning from this situation so far, so maybe it will continue to play out the way that I want it to. Who knows? I'm going to go for a really high cannon. I definitely want to log this. As soon as that pops, we really want to hit all that. Let's go. That was such a clean log. Amazing timing on our end. But I guess it could have been a little bit better if I had not cycled the Miner Plus Bats into their lane. But alternatively, if I didn't do that, would I have just lost the game? Because I baited out a Hunter. That was a lot of Elixir on his end. He could have supported his aggression a little bit more uh, aggressively. We're gonna log, we're gonna go in for skeletons, we're gonna go for another cannon here. We need to go and pull off and spam directly into that. With the fire spirit and log, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Get off my tower, get off my tower, mother witch. That was a lot scarier than I thought it would be, but we still cleaned it up. With the masterful cycle of multiple cannons, I don't think that you're going to have that much of an issue. As you guys can see, the later that you go into clone, it's going to be a difficult time because obviously you don't have fireball or poison to eliminate all the stuff that's spammed at you. Just make sure you don't get to double or triple elixir because that's where it gets a bit dicey. Make sure you go opposite lane so you beat out elixir like we did with the minor plus bats and you will win the game most of the time. For a 2.1 elixir meme deck, this thing is really solid. Hey, here we go. We're going to sauce out of good luck and see what's happening. If we split wall breakers, you guys already know it's the best play in Clash Drow. Forces out elixir on both sides or a really hefty elixir investment like a five elixir inferno tower. I, I see this as an absolute win. <laughs> Two for five, we'll take that trade any day of the week. So I'm gonna hit him up with the miner with the dark goblin coming at him. It's gonna be annoying because then the inferno tower just straight up dies. Why do you have executioner and inferno tower? What bait deck hurt you as a child, man? <laughs> like what happened here? Okay, so we can easily just go for a cannon and then skeletons on top of the executioner so it dies and it doesn't end up hitting our bats. And then we can follow up with the minor bats on the other side. You guys saw how we miraculously annihilated every ounce of his nice. push. He's like, yo, I got executioner for all your bait cards. And we're like, no fam, you don't. It's gonna die to skeletons. It feels really good to do that. Again, I hope that we bait out another Inferno Tower. That would just make my life so much better. Give me another five elixir sauce, brother. Oh, are you just gonna nope. eat that? Oh, you tornado it, okay. So it's good for me to not drop the uh, wall breakers in the same lane because if we drop it in the same exact lane, you guys already know what happens, right? He just activates King Tower, but fortunately for us, that's not going to happen for a while. We can just go for another cannon here, easily follow up with more minor wall breakers to annoy him because if you have minor wall breakers bats coming at you, you probably can't support your balloon push. And now you fireball, you still have Barry the Bat on your tower. How does that feel, man? Probably not that good. Barry's having a party at least. He's Barry feels pretty good about the situation. And now the Fire Spirit forces out another small spell. For one elixir, it does a lot of damage to towers. Every single time that your opponent sees it, they're going to be responding. They're not going to be like, yeah, I love this card. They'll hate you on so many different levels. So we're going to go in for more Miner. Uh, I think that the Miner should be able to get a lot of damage on the tower. The only inconvenient situation here is he might Tornado. I don't know if he does it or not. Yeah, he's going to do it. Okay. 
<laughs> makes sense. It makes sense. Makes sense. We're still going to go in for a Fire Spirit here with the Executioner targeting that. It's going to die very fast. And do we Wall Breakers here? I think we got to keep up the Elixir spam. We can easily activate King Tower too. So maybe that is another play that I'm going to be looking at here. I'm going to go for a Miner. And we'll see if he balloons with the Valkyrie or not. Should have dropped that more in the safe spot. I messed up with the Miner placement. Not going to lie. I done goofed to Aaron. But maybe the Dark Goblin's able to snipe the Inferno Tower from across the river. And we follow up with Wall Breakers <laughs> here. Oh, that was such a good play. I did not expect him to be good enough to snowball. When you see a deck like this, do you expect your opponent to be good at the game? Probably not, right? Damn! Damn! For me, I just did not anticipate that. So we're going to go for a cannon here. Definitely want to be able to defend this if possible. You know, that's always a good vibe, defending units. We're going to log this back. And I can activate King Tower, so this shouldn't be that bad, right? Or maybe I just bats. Yeah, I think I just bats and then go for another really high cannon here. So then the Death Bomb doesn't obliterate everything. That should be all dead. Fire Spirits, Dark Goblin is the wave of the future. When your opponent thinks that they can do stuff they never can. This deck cycle is absurdly fast. Oh my gosh, the Wall Breakers. Oh, if only, if only, if only. That would have been sick. But we can just go for another set of Miners. The Bats are going to be able to go and kill the Valkyrie. Even though my homie has like Execution or Fast Cycle with Balloon. And we've got Cannon that doesn't even shoot up. We're defending and we're getting more offensive pushes than him. Which is very fun to see, you know? So we're just going to go in for another high cannon here, see if he's going to fireball. Yeah, I thought he would fireball the cannon, no cap. But fortunately for us, that didn't happen. Maybe the cannon survives. Oh my gosh, he snowballs. Is this good? If we log, yo, can these wall breakers connect? Oh, we forced out another tornado though. Okay, I'm vibing with this. We can make it happen. Also, this guy's lower than me in trophy, so we have to win this game. I'm not going to lose this right now. We have to beat someone that's lower than us in trophies, all right? He's going to go in for another balloon cycle. He's so aggressive out here. He's so freaking feisty, man. All right, we're just going to log this back. We're going to go for another Daryl the Dark Goblin. We probably need to go for Skeletons here. He's going to lose the Executioner. He's going to lose the Valkyrie. I think we might end up having to go for Wall Breakers to go and pull that back, though. He's going to fireball. Bruh. He misses the Dark Goblin. Let's go. We got this. We're going to hit him up with the Miner of Bats. We got this on lock. Daryl the Dark Goblin's about to come up clutch. The Miner is putting in so much damage. And now we cycle him like the vicious madman we are. You guys already know if we just keep going for cannons and miners, he's not able to do anything. We're also able to activate King Tower by cycling multiple cannons, which is 100% always a vibe. And he fireballs that, which is a good play, and snowballs. If you guys didn't know that placement, that's a really good play on his end. But we're just going to log that, that executioner, make sure it dies before it gets any damage. That Miner just needs one more hit, and we walk away with the win. But I guess the Miner doesn't want to give me that last hit. I guess the Miner wants to make the game a little bit more painful and longer for this man. But you know what? In the end, it doesn't even matter. You've got Snowball, you've got Tornado for our Miner, and you've got a plethora of very good counters to all of our bait cards, but it doesn't matter. Hey, we got another one here. Let's sauce out of good luck and see what's happening. So you guys already know, we gotta go for Skeletons in the back to kick it open, finish it off the Miner with the Dark Goblin, and get the Daryl Surprise on top of the tower with another Miner. So Daryl the Dark Goblin's tanking for the Miner. We force out Log. Definitely not really the play that we want. We don't want to see him having Log so we can viciously annihilate our Daryls like that, but... I'm telling you, there's always a chance of cycling wall breakers with bats to give value. So we split up our wall breakers, we get a mortar out of them, that's four elixir already. We're having a good spot to be in this game. Because now, maybe, just maybe, we can get another cycle of miner and bats on him before he's ready. Easy log value. We are taking that for the team. Thank you, sir. We can hit him up with a fire spirit miner push, and this is super obnoxious because now he probably has to log it. I don't think he wants to eat that fire spirit sauce. Oh my goodness. It obliterated all of the goblins and got a lot of damage to the tower. That's what we like to see. So we're just going to go for bats. We can easily go in for more wall breakers here. I think that this is generally going to be the play because he's going to log and then he misses. And then the bats are still alive. The miner's tanking. Did we just win? I think we just won. <laughs> he doesn't even want to play the game anymore. He's like, Jake, get me out of here. So if I take the tower, we're going to win the game. That's all we have to do is just defend right now and we walk away with the W. If they miss the wall breakers because you're spamming at such low elixir with this deck, they just automatically lose. And that's why we love the game so much. Another thing that we have to consider is, hey, he just dropped his best answer to us. He literally just dropped his mortar. So now he's going to go for like Goblin Gang. And watch this prediction. We're going to do it again. We're going to do him dirty on another level. So I'm going to hit him up with a Fire Spirit on top of that first and foremost. And then we're going to make a pre-log play. We're going to make the biggest pre-log play you've ever seen. So he's going to go for a Goblin Gang, and we're going to hit it, and we're going to win the game. And we're going to win the game. <laughs> Let's go, baby! Part two, baby! That's what I'm talking about. The game's already over. 
He doesn't want to play anymore. His mental is absolutely defeated. It's over, ladies and gentlemen. So if he doesn't have Mortar and Cycle, that's what's going to happen. <laughs> you just walk away with Ws. Hey, let's go. That was super close at the end. Way more closer than I thought it would be, but we still pull it out. Epic start, but as the game starts to ramp up, as you guys can see, if you lose a tower and double or triple elixir, it gets extra spicy. And now we're top 10,000 again. Let's get it. All right, guys, let's get it. Let's get that bread. If we go for Bash in the back to kick open the game, and then I immediately go in for a miner on the other side that he doesn't respond to, it's generally always a good vibe. Especially if I log on top of the Dark Goblin and annoy him that way, it feels a lot better. So what are you going to do, man? You're going to go for your own Goblin Gang Gang. We can Daryl the Dark Goblin up in here as well. And I can go for a Fire Spirit to kick open the game very aggressively. I think that we're going to get chip damage on the tower. I think the Fire Spirit splashes onto everything there. Let's go! Look at all the damage I just got! No, Isn't that absurd? Isn't that a little bit ridiculous? I think that's kind of unfair. Not going to lie. I don't think that should happen. We just did almost his entire tower there, just with the simple bait push. And now he's down a lot of elixir. He used his log too, so you know what we can do? We go in for minor wall breakers, he's gonna go goblin gang, and we fire spirit on the goblin gang. He just loses the game. Straight up, like, loses the game. He's gone. He just lost. It's over. <laughs> I love this game so much, because you know what your opponent's gonna do if they don't have log? You can easily, easily counter a goblin gang or whatever bait card they drop with Fire Spirits now. So Minor Wall Breakers is infinitely better than it ever was before because they either drop a building on, on the Wall Breakers and they do a really bad negative trade and then the Fire Spirit doesn't matter because it's only one Elixir. If they drop a unit, they basically lose their tower because the bait cards just immediately die. That's kind of the vibe that I'm going for. And then we can go for Minor Fire Spirit. This is such a high level strategy. I get why all the pro players run this deck. Every single pro player in Clash Royale is playing this right now just because like first off, it's extremely fun at the start of the season. Second off, it's really good deck. I did not expect it to be this strong in the meta at all. So I'm gonna go for more wall breakers here and we'll see what he does. I mean, I just, I think he's gonna go Goblin Gang, which is a negative trade. And then we can clean it up with the Dark Goblin. We go in for another Miner. And we're like, yo, you can get damage on this tower because you've got most of your damage on the other side anyway. And then you have to respond to Daryl the Dark Goblin because he's about to lock onto your tower. <laughs> I, guess, I guess you don't have to respond to it, literally. Like, I guess you can eat the damage, you know? If you really want to, man, you're, if you're about it, I'm about it. Never doubt it. We're going to log here. We're going to be able to shut that all down. We follow up with another miner. And he's very annoyed right now. He's like, this is the craziest deck I've ever seen in Clash Royale. And why does it hard counter me? And honestly, man, it hard counters a lot of things in the meta. Golem decks, because you've got a super fast cycle with multiple cannons. It's so annoying for people. Like, this is probably my least favorite deck to play against, most likely, in the meta. Just because... You know, you watch as your tower just cons constantly bombarded by a new miner every five seconds. Ah, oh, Here we go again. Like, I just cycle another one, and then the wall breakers connect again. And with 17 seconds remaining, I'd love to see this man try to attempt to break through. Is he just going to rage quit? Is he not going to drop any more cards? I feel like that's what he did. <laughs> you know, it's a good sign for the deck if you get your opponents to rage quit or stop playing. This is what we strive for. This is what the deck does, and it is so skillful, yet it's still super strong. So if you guys want to try a new deck, this is it. And after that juicy W, we are 7,500 in the world. Roll right through with an ultra thick thumbs up to support the channel. Subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll see you in the next video.